Um, hi, I'm Shen Jing. I'm a second year PhD student at MIT. Uh, today I'll be talking about uh, our work, Two is Better Than One, the case for two, three, four SKU data set. Um, this is a joint work with colleagues from University of Wisconsin-Madison and Google and uh, MIT. Uh, so tree data structures are widely used in data systems. Um, applications include access methods and storage management. Uh, most of the uh, usages, use, uh, many of the usages store data on a block storage device and access through a buffer pool interface. Um, for example, uh, a buffer manager B tree is a, um, a de facto standard in uh, indexing and storage management in uh, traditional relational databases. Another um, uh, classic tree data structure, log structure merge tree, which optimizes for writes, has also seen uh, wide adoptions in recent developers for applications. Uh, its modern implementation also comes with a um, read-only buffer pool or block cache to cache the hot data blocks stored on uh, for, for the file stored on disk. However, uh, when the workload contains skew, uh, is skewed, a tree data structure running on top of buffer pool could suffer from uh, poor main memory utilization. For example, in a B tree, it is entirely possible that a page only contains a few hot records with many code ones. And these records are typically much smaller than a page granularity. And in order to access those records, you kind of need to keep the entire node in the buffer pool. Furthermore, if records are keyed on domains with no spatial locality, for example, use ID, um, these hot records could spread across the entire key space. So these might result in uh, very low main memory utilization, which either leads to uh, more expensive IOs or, or leads to increased cost for needing a bigger buffer pool for, for meeting a um, uh, performance target. The LSM tree, on the other hand, kind of partially mitigates this main memory utilization issue uh, in that um, data blocks near the top of the tree hierarchy tend to contain records that are frequently, uh, frequently updated. Since the search goes through the levels top to bottom, um, skill reads on these uh, up frequently updated data and have good buffer pool uh, utilization. However, for stationary data that don't get updated very often, they'll tend to get migrated down to be the near of the uh, top, uh, bottom of the LSM tree hierarchy. So if there are skill reads on these stationary data, you still get uh, poor main memory utilization, uh, much like a B tree case. So LSM tree kind of uh, only partially mitigates this main memory utilization issue. So in this work, we seek to answer how do we improve the main memory utilization of buffer pools for tree structures on skewed workloads. Um, our answer to this is to basically follow two principles. One is uh, embrace multi-structuring to physically separate hot data out of the code data, much like in LSM tree design. But we further, we actively migrate data at the record level in both directions. I'll explain these uh, sort of uh, two uh, applications to be tree and LSM tree. So first let's take a look at how do we apply this uh, principles to a, a buffer manager B tree. So the basic idea is we compose two physical uh, B trees uh, while exposing a single tree interface logically. And then we perform a record level data migration between two trees so that the hot record stays in the hot B tree while the code ones in, uh, stay in the code B tree. And we size the hot tree to be close to the buffer pool capacity so that it is uh, main memory resident most of the time. The intuition is that once we, have done, once we have done this, the vast majority of the accesses will go to the tree, which means results in increased main memory utilization. Structurally, this kind of looks like a LSM tree, but there are two major differences. LSM tree performs this, uh, down, only performs downward data migration through its compaction mechanism, while 2B tree here performs bidirectional record level data migration. And, 2BG here uh, performs updates in place, while SM3 typically uh, will perform updates out of place. And now I'm going to talk about uh, data mi migration, uh, record level data migration in detail. First is the downward data migration. So the goal here is to evict code data out of the hot tree uh, with very low overhead when it fills up. 
Um, so what we're doing here is basically we are leveraging uh, efficient range scan operations supported by uh, tree data structures, for example, B-tree, to approximate a clock replacement algorithm. So basically each record in the hot tree is embedded with a few bits of, inf bits of information that, that are maintained on, on the fly. And this allows us, uh, uh, this design is, is general in that we do not need to, and we do not need uh, special, special data structures like uh, linked list, as in the case for LRU, uh, to maintain, uh, to track the hotness of records. And they're much more lightweight than LRU-based solutions. Next is the upward data migration. Uh, so basically, uh, if we are, uh, we have, if we have a miss in the hot tree, we may need to migrate records out of the code co tree to the hot tree, right? A naive solution will be to always migrate every accessed record from the code tree to the hot tree. Well, this will uh, cause us a lot of uh, churns or evictions in the hot tree if code, code records gets migrated upwards. So our goal here is to only migrate warm records uh, upwards to the hot tree to reduce the churns to the, to the hot tree. To, in order to identify those warm records, uh, we're taking a probabilistic approach in that we are only migrating a sampled set of accesses to the code tree. The intuition is that warm records will be more likely to be sampled. In this um, uh, reference uh, access stream, uh, blue records are five times more likely uh, to be uh, sampled up than uh, the yellow and the green one. So, blue records will be much more likely to be migrated, which is exactly what we wanted. Uh, we next experimentally compare uh, the two B-tree and single B-tree, both implemented using lean store buffer pool and its uh, B-tree implementation. Uh, we configured a one gigabyte of uh, buffer pool and five gigabyte uh, data set sites, which contains 20 million records and 256 byte uh, each. Uh, and we configured a 16 kilobyte page size uh, we size the hot tree to be around 90% of the buffer pool capacity, which leaves 10% of the buffer pool for the code tree. We set the probabilistic sampling range to be around uh, 50%, which works reasonably well for our experiment results. Um, we mainly use the YCSB workload, uh, but with two access distribution. The first is a YCSB hotspot, which has a varying uh, working set size. Uh, the working set consists of a randomly chosen record from the entire key space. Uh, this is to measure how big a, uh, the working set each of these design can effectively cache. And for the uh, next uh, workload, which is a, uh, still a YCSB workload, but, but it covers, but its working set covers all of the data records, but with Ziffin access distribution. So this is, is the result of the uh, YCSB hotspot uh, workload. We mainly look at uh, point read operation and point update operations. And the X axis here is the size of the working set. Uh, we are varying it from 50 megabytes to 1.5 gigabytes, which is larger than the buffer pool capacity. So what we are seeing here is that two B tree is able to cache much more data than a single B tree here, thanks to the uh, record level data migration and it's two, stru two structuring approach. And for the YCFC Zephian access distribution, which covers all of the uh, data records in, the, uh, in its working set, we are seeing up to 70% super improvements uh, for both read and update workload. Another way of looking at this figure is that um, you can have a smaller buffer pool, but uh, you can have a smaller buffer pool but with two tree uh, design. Uh, but delivers similar uh, throughput compared to a single tree with a larger buffer pool. So it basically can improve the cost performance of the, uh, of the system. Next, we looked at the uh, range scan operation. Uh, we, uh, the workload is a mixture of uh, point lookups and uh, short range scan operation. Each scan operation uh, processes uh, access 100 consecutive records starting at a specific key. Uh, so on average, 2B3 uh, is 5 to 10%, uh, causes 5 to 10% more IO operations per scan, but its throughput is uh, on par with uh, a single B3 case here. So in summary, 2B3 is able to improve the, uh, upon the point operations for skew workloads without uh, while delivering, delivering comparable range scan performance. If we follow up on the 2Tree architecture, 
can actually na uh, naturally extend it to a n tree architecture where n is greater than two. Well, the LSM tree is kind of like n tree in that LSM tree is already a multi tree structure. But the thing is that it only moves data downwards. So it's suboptimal for certain reworkloads, skewed reworkloads. So we're proposing here a specific entry design by slightly modifying a LSM tree that preserves the right optimized property, but also provides better skew reads. Recall that the data uh, accesses to data block near the top of the tree hierarchy tend to contain, uh, tend to have good block cache main memory utilization. So we are, the modification we did to an LSM tree is basically we augment an LSM tree with upper, <laughs> Data, uh, upward data migration at the record level for reads. So the idea is basically we are actively bringing up stationary and warm records to, to, to be closer to the top of the uh, tree hierarchy. Okay, one question quickly arises is how do we identify candidate work uh, records for upward data migration? A naive solution will be to always migrate every record accessed uh, in the LSM tree. Well, this will surely bring up the uh, stationary and warm records, but it will also cause us a lot of uh, unnecessary writes uh, to the LSM tree. Instead, we are proposing two heuristics. One is based on the observation that data blocks near the top of the tree hierarchy are typically well cached. So bringing up records in that are already cached in the block cache does not make uh, does not give us much benefit. So we are only considering um, records access that incurs a uh, block hash miss. And this is a, a good approximation that these records are likely in the bottom of the tree hierarchy. Besides this, we are also applying the same probabilistic upper data migration scheme to B tree case to added, identify warm records. So these two together help us identify uh, stationary and warm records um, while reducing unnecessary rights um, significantly. We call our proposal up LSM tree. Well, uh, implemented in RocksDB, we compare up LSM tree against two LSM tree baseline. All of the experiments, uh, they use a one gigabyte of uh, memory budget. For up LSM tree, we configured it one gigabyte of block cache, and we compared it against a first, uh, the first uh, baseline, uh, which is a vanilla LSM tree with a one gigabyte of uh, block cache. The second baseline we consider is the LSM tree with a in-memory row cache. So RocksDB comes with this row caching feature that is able to cache frequently uh, access the record of the level files stored on this disk in a in-memory global memory uh, hash table. So it is able to improve the main memory utilization as well. So we are allocating 90% of the memory to the row cache and 10% of the memory to the block cache so that uh, index nodes and uh, fence pointers and filters are well cached for the, the LSM tree-based row cache case. So these are the same, uh, uh, see these are the results of the same experiments we ran. In general, up LSM tree and LSM tree uh, are both effective at improving the uh, main memory utilization for point, uh, skew point read operations. Um, however, for the LSM tree with row caching, uh, they have a negative impact on update workload. For, the, for time reason, I won't go into detail. Uh, their analysis in the paper, uh, LS, up LSM tree and vanilla LSM tree doesn't suffer from this. And next we looked at the uh, range scan operation. So up LSM tree uh, has a uh, comparable uh, range scan performance compared to a vanilla LSM tree. Then they are both outperform, uh, they both outperform LSM tree with row caching. This is because row caching is only able to help Read up or point read operations, and they're taking majority of the, the memory budget. Whereas block caching, they're able to ac accelerate both point reads and range scan operation. That's an LSM, uh, vanilla LSM tree and up LSM tree, since they have a bigger block cache. That's why we are seeing this uh, difference here. So basically, block caching is more versatile. Uh, in summary, up LSM tree is able to improve the skew. Uh, improve the point read operation for skew workloads without sacrificing performance for point update and rest scan operation. So it basically dominates both baselines. Besides tree data structures, we can also apply these uh, um, 
uh, these principles to non-based, non-tree-based data structures, for example, hashing or heap files with secondary indexes. These are all very widely used uh, structures in data, data systems could, that could benefit from improved domain memory utilization for skewed workloads. Um, so in conclusion, we studied the problem of main memory utilization for tree data structures in data system. We advocate multi-structuring and regular data migration. Uh, we demonstrated that these principles uh, through two applications to B-Tree and Allison Tree. Um, this concludes my talk. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.